the secret of getting ahead is getting started good morning srm institute of science and technology ramapuram campus takes pleasure in welcoming you all for the day 3 session of the five days faculty development program on integration of advanced technologies to industry 4.0 i am delighted to welcome the resource person of this morning dr doreen robin founder and director at computational intelligence research foundation chennai who is the yardstick of quality welcome dr darin my cordial welcome to all the participants who are virtually connected with the passion to gain knowledge in learning models before introducing the speaker for today's session let me give you all a brief reminder about the forthcoming sessions tomorrow day 4 the 7th of july between 11 am to 1230 pm Uh, the session will be on deep learning and its applications by dr uma maheshwari associate professor anna university chennai on day 5 the 8th of july between 11 am and 1230 pm the session is on uh, challenges and opportunities in iot handled by dr k mohan associate professor vit and the hands on sessions will be conducted today at and tomorrow at 2 pm on learning and deep learning a couple of announcements from my end kindly participate in all the forthcoming sessions and fill the feedback form posted at the end of each session to get the certificate do not ask for a feedback form link in the middle of the session please mute your mic and turn off the video and do not share your screen at any time during the program any query shall be posted in the chat box feedback form link will be definitely posted at the end and please do not load the chat box with queries about feedback form as it would be difficult for the speaker to look into the questions posted related to the session topic and answer thank you it's my honor and privilege to introduce the guest speaker for today dr doreen robin the founder director at computational intelligence research foundation chennai dr doreen received her btech degree from madras university masters in engineering from anna university and phd from anna university Her research interest include parallel and distributed computing, peer-to-peer -peer computing, grid computing, cloud computing, and big data analytics. Her previous position include professor at Loyola Ikram College of Engineering and Technology, assistant professor at Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering, and teaching research associate in the Department of Computer Science at Anna University. She has published 30 plus papers in international and national journals and conferences. She is a life member of IST and a reviewer for. computer and electrical engineering journal and future generation computer science journal a company computational intelligence research foundation located at chennai is a research and development company in the domain of information and communication technology she trains the students on latest technologies to make them industry ready with immediate employability she offers internship in mobile computing and web application and provides certification co courses on hadoop and big data Dr. Doreen is also the administrator of Bethel Matriculation and Higher Secondary School. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great privilege to all of us to listen to her this morning. May I now request Dr. Doreen Robin to handle the session on applying machine learning models on benchmark data set. Ma'am, please. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Shiny Ma'am, for the introduction. So it's my privilege uh, to share my knowledge of what I know about machine learning to the participants of the day. on behalf of computational intelligence research foundation i i would like to thank srm college in ramapuram campus for having invited me uh, to this uh, talk okay and a special thanks uh, to shiny ma'am for this invite okay so we will start off with the session already i know you are into the tune of this faculty development program okay it's a five days program and you are in the middle of the session before we start off with the session let me ask a question how many of you are happy today if you are happy type s yes in the chat box yes thank you sundari ma'am thank you dai three ma'am thank you thank you thank you prasklal ma'am thank you jai prakash thank you so all of you are happy on this bright morning i thank you angel and ma'am okay happy to see you all even though we are in pandemic okay it's a great privilege uh, these technologies has not stopped us in sharing our knowledge in enriching our knowledge okay and um, before i start off my session on machine learning 
All right. I'm going to ask you a question. How many of you have worked in machine learning technologies? Yes or no? Yes, most of you know. Yes, no. I just started. Yes, no. So it's a, we have got blend of people. Some yes, mostly no. So today in the session of that, like one and a half hours, we'll be focusing on the basics of machine learning, and then what is machine difference between algorithms and models, and then we'll be focusing on the benchmark data set. Right. Whenever we have a doubt, you could stop me in the. You can post your questions in the uh, chat boxes. Right. So today we are going to see applying machine learning models on benchmark data. So some of you would be wondering what is a benchmark data set. I'll be dealing in detail during the session. Right. So. And as uh, Shiny Mam told, I was in the teaching field for a decade. And then at one point, I thought, let me start a company. When I hear in my company, we basically work uh, for solutions to problems. We are working for corporate companies. Okay, and then we train a faculties. Okay, we have got like students internship. We have got faculty internship also. Faculties have come, they are trained because we give them for hands-on experience. Okay, and then we we also conduct courses for the students. And my basic our objective is to make people to work with coding. Okay, so that's a main you can check out my company's website. So before going into machine learning, there are certain base rules that you need to know about some packages. Okay, so we'll be seeing about uh, uh, NumPy. Okay, before we take a data, we cannot just take the data and put it into a machine learning algorithm and run and get it. That is not possible. First, we should have an insight about the data. Okay, we have to have the knowledge about the data. And in addition, for what problem you are going to find solution from the data set. Okay, these points should be very clear and concise in manner. Then we'll be able to start training a machine learning system, right? So the first package that we'll be dealing is about NumPy okay and the next NumPy stands for anybody knows what does NumPy stands for NumPy is my voice breaking yes ma'am little oh. Okay, is it clear now or is it still breaking? Uh, I'll talk once again. Is it clear now or is it still breaking? No, it's better now. Okay, I I'll just end the meeting and rejoin back again. Let me check. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, yes. Hello, I'm back. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Is my wife yeah, yeah. here? Is it still breaking? Uh, couldn't comprehend. You're saying my voice is breaking. <laughs> still it's breaking. But my side, the signal strength is good. It's almost like 90 MBBS. OK, you proceed, ma'am. OK. okay. Somebody's mics are on unmute. Uh, can you make it mute? OK. Yeah. One of the Thank you, Raman, sir. Can you put your mic on mute, please? OK. So we'll be um, uh, seeing about NumPy, SkyPy, Matplotlib. Okay, so NumPy as it stands for Numerical Python, 
SkyPy stands for Scientific Python, Pandas for Python for data analysis, and Matplotlib is to plot your data. So, for example, if you are going to have like a, a one block of data, we cannot go into each rows of the data. If you are able to plot it, then we'll be getting insights about the data. And on top of Matplotlib is Seaborn. Okay, on top of Matplotlib is Seaborn and Seaborn. It's a better visualization than Matplotlib. All right. So then we'll be seeing about machine learning algorithm and benchmark data set. So before going to machine learning, uh, we'll be seeing about but the first inception is artificial intelligence. Okay. Let me ask you all a question. Can you give some examples about uh, machine learning day to day? Any day-to-day -day application, any day-to-day -day application about machine learning algorithm that you have experienced or you have learned? You're able to hear me? Autopilot. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Is it still breaking or it's better now? Better, ma'am. Better. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you, ma'am. So you can share. Uh, you kindly don't present your screen. Okay. Can you share any examples of machine learning that you've come across in your life? Is I'm. Um, uh, the entire event is also streamed on YouTube. I'm getting response from YouTube like washing machine. Yes, washing machine is one of the best example. It has been trained in such a way that um, you load your clothes and then you set it up whether it is cotton or silk and automatically it washes and gives you. Yes, coffee maker. Yes, the coffee maker. Netflix recommendation. Exactly right. Divya time, ma'am. And also I've got from certain ma'am booking Uber. Yes, it is automizing the process. You remember before we used to go and stand on the road, wait for autos to come, stop, and then we'll ask them and we have to bargain with them and then we reach the destination. It's very good, Meenakshi, ma'am. It's about uh, speech recognition, what I speak. Example, Siri. Okay, you use Siri. If I say, hello, Siri, I want, then it does it for me. So, so many applications where it does not involve much of human interpretation, but still the machine is trying to complete the process. Wherein the machine is trained in such a way. So if the task of this particular type is given, and this should be the end of it. All right. So these are some examples that have come across in your life. So before machine learning, we have artificial intelligence. And from our machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. And deep learning is a subset of machine learning. All right. So today's session, tomorrow you have a bright new session of deep learning. All right. So thank you for all the examples that you have given. So artificial intelligence is making a machine, but it, they say it will be replaced machines, but machine cannot replace men. Okay, so machines are able to carry it in a smarter way. It enables uh, to behave like computers, but it will not be computers, right? So when I take machine learning, it's a subset of AI. That is based, the machine should be given access to data. The, the main uh, concept of machine learning is that I have my data set. Okay, I repeat it, I have my data set. I feed my data set into my system. Okay, I feed my data set into my machine learning system. Okay, the algorithms in the system, okay, the type of algorithms that I define it in the system will turn will try to learn patterns from the data. I repeat it. The main focus of machine learning algorithm is that I have my data set. Whenever you work with machine learning algorithm, it is mandatory that you should test your machine learning algorithm with benchmark data sets. Okay, with benchmark data sets. So when I have my machine learning algorithm, I have my data set. When I feed my data set, okay, what is the data set I want to use? When I feed my data set into my machine learning algorithm, all right, the algorithm will try to learn patterns, okay, from my data. What kind of patterns on my data? And then it learns from it, okay? 
so that's about its extraction of patterns from large data set in our um, in my company we have tried up to 10 lakhs to 20 lakhs of data once we feed into a system what is the machine learning algorithm that I define from which it is able to extract the patterns and to give me? So the main emphasis of uh, machine learning algorithms, extraction of patterns, okay? Extraction of patterns. How does it extract patterns? By the algorithm that I set up my model. Okay, what algorithm I'm going to set up in my machine learning algorithm will be used, okay? So what algorithm basically does, it parses the data. I said it is going to extract patterns. So the first step, it will parse my data. So if, for example, if I'm going to work with a diabetics data set, okay, diabetics data set, PIMA, diabetics is a benchmark data set, okay? I'll show about the data set the, during the demonstration. So first I have to parse the data. Then I have to learn from the data. And finally, I have to apply what I have learned to make informed decisions. The first step in machine learning, I have to part the data. The second step, I need to learn from the data. And then I have to make informed decisions. All right. So I'll show you uh, one of uh, the examples. Okay. So this is uh, the Pima data set, okay? This is the Pima data set. So this is about a diabetics, okay? Diabetics data set. If you see, okay, if you see here, so when generally for a diabetic patient, uh, these are the parameters the data set has, like glucose level, okay? You have some threshold above which is a diabetic patient, below which is non-diabetic patient, all right? The blood pressure, the skin thickness, insulin, the body mass index, the diabetics pedigree function, the age of the patient, and outcome. So here, when you see in the outcome, if it is zero, which means the patient is a non-diabetic patient. If it is one, he is a diabetic patient. So I can give this data set, okay? I can give this data set into my system, okay? Here, since I've given only here, only few lines have been shown, I can... Uh, uh, show you what would be the entire uh, size of data. Okay. Can you see the size of data is 768? Okay, 768 rows. Okay, so here these are the parameters. When I give this data into my system, when I give my data into my system, it will part the data. Okay, and then it has to learn from the data and then it has to make informed decision. If I take the same example of the diabetic data set, so once I train my algorithm, I'll train with all the parameters, all the data like glucose, uh, the skin thickness, the pedigree functions, everything, and also with outcome whether the patient is a diabetic patient or is a non diabetic patient. Okay, this is how I will be training my system. Once I wish to test my system, after the training phase, is my testing phase. In my testing phase, I will not give the column called outcome. So final column was outcome, right? That will not be given. Only my data will be given. Once I train with my machine learning, the second step I go for testing. In my testing, I give only my data. My machine learning model will tell me using what algorithm I've trained, my machine learning model will tell me whether this patient is a diabetic patient or is a diabetic patient, all right? So in that, I get my predicted results. I get my predicted results. So in this example, I have my actual results. So when I compare my actual results with my predicted results that I've received from the model, where I'll be calculating the accuracy of the machine learning model, what I have developed. All right, I repeat it. So when I show you uh, the data set, so the data set is of this, like the pregnancy, the sugar, the blood thickness, insulin, BMI, pedigree function, age, and outcome. This is my data set. At this, since I've used the head of function, I'm just taking the first five row, okay? But um, when I have a data set, I just run the data set. You'll be seeing totally I've got 768 rows, 768 rows and nine columns. So these are the data. The pregnancy, the sugar, the blood pressure, thickness. When I train, I take all these, okay? I will be taking all these. 
ओके द प्रेगनेंसी द ग्लूकोस द ब्लड शुगर सिस्टम थिकनेस इंसुलिन बीएमआई एज दिस विल बी माय डेटा and this outcome will be my target okay this outcome will be my target so when i train so if the values are like this there is a diabetic patients when the values are like this is a non diabetic patients right after i do my training phase in testing phase i'll give only my data okay i'll be giving only my data i will not give this outcome i will not give this outcome so when i give my test data my machine learning model what i have trained will tell me whether the patient the is diabetic or not in addition i have my actual data i'll compare my predicted data with my actual data to find the accuracy of the model to find the accuracy of the machine learning model okay so any doubt till now is it clear Yes, ma'am. Clear. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Now, next we we'll move on to the next session. Okay. So this is about the data sets. Okay. How we take the data, and as most of you told, one of an example is recommender system. Okay. When you you when you view your videos in YouTube. Okay. When you see a video, the next video will be recommended. Okay, the next will be it will be say for example if I'm trying to listen some kind of uh, jazz kind of music, the next video also will be of jazz music, right? So this wherein a recommendation algorithm is run into your YouTube. Okay, so this kind of uh, system, uh, kind of video you see, which means probably the next video also will be the same. Okay, how many of you have bought uh, some things in Amazon or Flipkart, and have you seen? have you seen in that uh, yeah have you seen when you buy say for example can you list anything that you bought on amazon on flipkart before pandemic any some products what were you bought anything that you bought Yeah, you got mobile. Ganesh sir bought mobile charger, mobile shoes. Say for example, it's mostly mobile. Just say for example, if Suresh Krishna sir is or searching for a particular model of mobile, but he should have seen down here. Yes, he searched for Redmi mobile. Thank you, Suresh Krishna sir. The mobile. When you search for a particular model of mobile, have you seen at the down the people who have bought this product have viewed this product also? Relative to the same specification of Redmi, yes, 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 exactly right. Say so that is what that is that which means there is a recommendation machine learning algorithm that runs in your web browser, which learns from the patterns. Okay, say for example, I'm going to click this, then I'm going to click this, then I'm going to click this. So the chaining of patterns are trained. Able to understand the patterns of how each Viewers, if it is a mobile view, you mobile. If the person wants to buy a mobile, all right, and in specific, it is me. The machine learning algorithm will try to learn the patterns of people how they find mobile and the attitude of the users. Okay, if they know, so it will ask you right onto the left what kind of RAM you want, what price you want. So it will have the price as its base factor. So people buying, like say for example, if you want to buy a mobile between fifty thousand to twenty thousand, then people who have bought mobile between fifty thousand to twenty thousand, their patterns in which how they search for different models of different companies are already be trained. Okay, the learn of patterns i told you, machine learning is learning the patterns it is already learned and as the next user comes and tries to buy the same mobile of 50000 to 20000 it will definitely show you the recommendation system yes you get recommendation for buying accessories also exactly right exactly right so that is which means the machine learning algorithm is trying to learn patterns from your data set all right and next so this is about one such example of machine learning algorithm as a recommendation system right and now we'll go into python for data analysis right python for data analysis though if you have lots of data okay without analysis the first step in machine learning is that you have to analyze your data 
and you should visualize your data and then only we have to go and follow machine learning algorithm so i'll see the overview of python libraries for data scientists okay first we need to select and filter what the, what is the data that i need okay what is the data that i need i need not have say for example the same diabetics information i showed you it's a curated information which means i need i have got the data columns only where it is related to, to measure the diabetics level of a patient okay the sugar level of a patient but other i didn't have, say for example but if you take from a bigger data set it will have the patient id it will have the name of the patient, the blood group of the patient, the address of the patient, his email ID, so many things, which is not going to factor anything about the diabetics of a patient to figure out whether the patient is a diabetic patient or not. So you should be very careful in doing the curation process. Okay, curation will mean which means you'll be removing whatever columns or the data that is not needed that will not scatter you to find the solution to the problem okay so for that purpose this is one of the best package pandas is one of the best package you can plot the data and you have to do description analytics i am posting this entire video also into my youtube channel uh, by last week uh, last weekend i made another uh, uh, video for a college that's on business analytics if you listen to it if you have a time you can go and listen to that i will i have told about descriptive analytics diagnosis analytics predictive analytics and prospective analytics also so that is all very important so pandas is one of the package but pandas is one of the package which is um you have to do a data analysis the analysis of data is very very important before you start off with your machine learning algorithm so for this example uh if i want to import pandas i'll be importing like import pandas as pd so this is the package that i'll be using so instead of referring pandas i'll be using PD, okay, I'll be using as PD, right? So I have a data set, okay. Here you can see my data set is almost 1,50,930. That's my first data set. This data set is about the wine review data set. Why I've taken wine review? This wine review data set is a benchmark data set, excuse me, it's a benchmark data set okay so i'm using pandas can you see here panda.read csv my data type is of csv csv stands for comma separated values csv stands for comma separated values this example i'm taking like one data set is 1,50,930 and 11 columns the second is 1,29,990 so i'm combining both i'm concatting both data sets using this package okay pandas Okay, now I can show you the total number of rows and columns are two lakhs eighty thousand nine one data. So okay, two lakhs eighty thousand nine one data. So always these are the columns. So, so I can see all the fourteen columns. Okay, what winery? What is the variety? Okay, what is the distributor? And uh, from which region, for which province, okay? What is the price of this? What is the points? They give some points, right? What is the points? What is the designation, the description, okay? From which country is it, okay? So I've totally, I've got two lakhs of data, okay? Two lakhs, 80,000 data about point review. So before, if I want to know which country, if I want to predict which country has got uh, the best sales in wine or which country has given the best points, okay, which is the best wine or which is the least wine, okay, I can do the analysis before I feed my data into my machine learning algorithm right so for that we use the package called this pandas okay pandas is for python for data analysis it is used to analyze my data before i feed my data into my machine learning algorithm and one point i want to emphasize here is that when you feed your data into machine learning there are two points that you should take very clearly one is that your data set should not have any missing values okay all the columns should have some values 
okay if your data set doesn't have any values some of the rows or columns are not have sorry some of the rows are not having any value then there is different methodology to compute values okay that's a deep research that i will be that will not be discussed in this session right so but all your columns and uh, rows and columns the trick should have data that's the first thing if you have a missing value then your machine learning algorithm will not work to completion the second most important thing is that you have to convert your categorical values into numerical values your categorical values into numerical values so categorical if it is string your machine learning algorithm will not understand okay i will show you with an example how we convert it you should convert all the categorical values into numerical values then only will be able to feed in my data and then my machine learning algorithm runs the first step is analysis okay so i'm taking this uh, data one data set is a benchmark data sets okay so it has got uh, like 2 lakhs okay 2 lakhs and 901 data okay and 14 columns so when i give this value dot describe okay because y is the value okay y is the variable i've concatenated using a pandas can you see pandas i've taken these two data sets okay i've concatenated and further more i've been referring to my data set using the variable called y okay furthermore okay and then uh, here i am just trying to find out can you see here something called nan which means not a number and from here i'd be able to understand this describe will work only for columns okay only for columns which has numerical values describe a function will not work for columns that are non numeric values okay and see i have imported a package called missing number so i told you right i told you right your machine learning algorithm will not work with missing numbers so i am using this ms and o package like how i imported pandas this package is called as missing number i am giving my entire data set i am figuring out how many missing values are there in the columns okay how many missing values are there in the columns so with one visualization i am able to find because it is not easy for me to go for each row of the two lakhs eighty thousand and then find out this row this column whether it is as a missing number or not everything in python packages are given okay so you have to just run the package and with one shot i'm able to find uh, which are the rows we have got missing values and what are the computations i need to do okay and now i'm going to list by country okay i'm going to list by country okay distribution of y which which country has the most uh, distribution of y and reviews it's us okay and it goes along because it see it data visualization is so brilliant right so i need not go into data one once i know how to run my algorithm uh, run my pandas i'll be able to figure it out who which company has got okay i'm just listing the data of the top 20 companies all right i'm sorry top 20 countries and then i'm seeing the price i'm using another box plot okay here in where i use this package called matplotlib okay here i have used csns this package is called cbon okay see it's very easy for me to see country wise average wine prices okay country wise average wine prices so with one shot i can see of all the data sets and this is another thing okay here the country price because if i have two lakhs i cannot go in my x axis for two lakhs and y axis will be the price okay but here they have used another package called squareify okay squareify using that we have find found it out and here only using panda see i'm just grouping my function okay and then finding which country is the most expensive wine france has got the most expensive wine and my least expensive wine is portugal portugal okay so this is about the entire country wise box plot so here i can see which country has got the highest price can i see here can i see france see france has got the highest price so i can group i can visualize my data of the most rated wine and company the least rated wine and companies okay so the country the country wise box plot i can have a joint plot of my points and prices each wine has got its point so i can find which uh, point is more and what is the highest price okay 
and the types of grapes you know wine you get it from the grapes the grapes used for the most expensive wine so the most expensive wine is this style red blend and grapes used for most rare wine so which wine they like the most is portuguese red so i can find which grape is used for the best so if i want to start my own company of uh, production not only for wine or for anything when i get this insight then it will be easy for me to forecast okay still now i have not started with any of the machine learning only with my data set i am analyzing my data all right i am analyzing my data here are the grapes used for least price wine okay for the least price so i cannot this will not be used that much better okay the country is uh, uh, the maximum points 100 is received by france how many count how many people have given 100 from 2 lakhs it is giving me 12 and the minimum value the maximum value and the mean value okay and so much and so more the most expensive wine the winery okay and it keeps going on okay so this is the, for an example i just show you how, how, how important is to learn about the data analysis before i start with my machine learning okay is the voice disturbance there okay no, it's fine okay thank you but the, even the entire session will be on my youtube channel after the session, maybe the end of the session, I'll share it with you. If you want to learn or listen more to it, you'll be able to uh, listen to it. And you can uh, like and subscribe to the channel. So whenever I come, and again, the next one is I'm coming on for A on robotics. And uh, any of my lectures, you'll be able to listen to it. Okay. Uh, now, uh, is it clear about the data analysis? Okay. How we take a data. You have not done in a hands-on. You'll be having a hands-on experience uh, today afternoon. That you will explore even more. This time, showing you how much more data analysis could be done. All right. Yes. So now I'll tell you about the packages. All right. So overview of Python libraries. That is what I told how we can select, how we can filter the data, see the most expensive wine, the least expensive wine, the most uh, expensive wine, what is the grape that is used. So all these of sorting, grouping, rearranging can be done. And I, I showed you about plotting, right? When I showed you about the plotting, which country, the France got the highest price, or the highest point. I, when I plot, it's very easy for me to visualize. Then the descriptive analysis, I'm just, I, understanding what is there in the data okay what is there in the data so descriptive I always say when i go to even we are feeling sick and you go to a doctor and we describe about our sickness to a doctor all right so i got a head pain i've got a running nose i've got gold i got body pain this that once we describe then the doctor with this experience he will understand what is your disease and then he may if he's not able to figure it out then he gives you for a diagnostic analysis or for blood or this scan or that scan otherwise if the disease is simple then he writes in his prescription and gives to you okay so here we are describing about our data that is descriptive analysis are trying to understand the data before we move on into our machine learning algorithm Okay, many popular to, today I showed you, right? Like NumPy, SkyPy, Pandas, and SkyKitLearn. Okay, NumPy is for numerical Python. All kind of numerical analysis could be done using this package. You need not score. You should know how to import a package, then how to run the functionalities in package. SkyPy is for Python. And the third is Pandas. That is what Python for data analysis. And SkyKitLearn is a package where the bundles of machine learning algorithm bundles of machine learning algorithm are already been into this um, skyketland package you can import the package and you can start say for example if you're doing your research or you are a phd student okay you need to write your own algorithm the advantage of python is that they give you the source code also of the existing package you can take the package and you can manipulate it you could fine-tune it and you'll be able to use it for your own new algorithm okay so that way you could be doing it once your algorithm runs fine with your benchmark data set you can post it into your pypy pypy pypi python package index website there you will see lakhs and lakhs of projects being uploaded about python right 
So even if you wish, you can take those back with the sun try to run. So these things are used to analyze our data. Okay, NumPy, SkyPy, Matplotlib. SkyKidLearn is a package where bundles of machine learning algorithms are there. Okay, once that is done, only with analysis we cannot. Run. We have to visualize. Okay, if I just do an analysis, I cannot. I I'll be able to do an analysis, but once if I visualize, okay, once I visualize, so here you can use Matplotlib. And that one syllable is Matplotlib, Seaborn. Even there are different things like Bokeh, B O K E H. Okay, that is one of the beautiful uh, data visualization package. As we don't have much time, this I showed you an example about uh, Matplotlib and Seaborn. Okay, NumPy. Even if I work uh, on images, okay, I I working on OpenCV. Okay, on image processing and SK image also, all the images when I feed into it will be converting into an NumPy array. Not only image, if I want to work with lots of data, like multi-dimensional array, matrices, as well as functions that are used to provide all my mathematical and statistical operations can be done. And also it provides vectorization of mathematical operations on arrays and matrices. Say if you are going to work with a lot and lot of data, lots and lots of data, then you need to uh, use for NumPy. Uh, before and all, you need to uh, write your own algorithm. But here, um, but here, the algorithms have been provided, and you'll be able to use it, right? SciPy is for scientific type, where you have got you need to do your differentiation algorithm, integration algorithm, but it itself provides you the package. It is built on top of NumPy. I showed you about pandas, right? All kind of the data structure that is used in pandas is called as data frame. Okay, the data structure that is used in pandas is called data frame, like data manipulation, reshaping, merging, sorting, slicing, aggregation. Everything could be done. And I said, right, very important, handling of missing data. If there is missing data, it's difficult for us to work with machine learning algorithm. And SkyKidLearn, it provides the machine, like if you want to do a classification algorithm, want to work with the regression algorithm, if you want to cluster an algorithm, if you want to validate the model, the machine learning model that you have done, then this is built on top of NumPy, SkyPy, and Matplotlib. And Matplotlib, it allows to plot two-dimensional plotting, okay? And then here you can have all types of plots, like a line plot, a scatter plot, a bar chart, a histogram, whatever the things, okay? And Seaborn is based on Matplotlib. It's a higher-level interface, okay? It's a different higher-level interface. Okay, before we start off, uh, any questions? Ma'am, someone has done screen sharing and yours has gone. Oh, see, when it happened. Now you can do, ma'am. Yeah, I will resume. Yeah. When did it happen now or a little before? Yeah, just two, two seconds. Oh, two okay, minutes no, back. No, no problem. Yeah, yeah. So we have discussed about uh, uh, NumPy. In the afternoon session, probability have would be having uh, uh, yes, a hands-on session on NumPy, SkyPy, Matplotlib. Seaborn. Whether you're able to understand these packages for analysis, any doubts? Yeah, I'll share the a difference between PD dot Excel file. See PD. Okay, uh, I'm importing pandas as PD. If I want um, to import, okay, if I want to import my CSV, then I give read dot CSV. Okay. If I want to import Excel file, I'll give read.excel. Okay. It see I'll show in the slide. See, uh, if I want to read a CSV, I, before that I should have imported imported pandas as PD. If I import CSV, I have I'm giving me, I'm giving the URL. Even directly from the URL, also you can import. I'll show you a demo of it. And pd.readexcel. Then, if I if my if my file is of Excel, if my data set is of Excel type, then I use read Excel. If it's my data, my DT, I can use SDS and HDF. Okay, uh, HDF is uh, Hadoop. 
okay hadoop distributed file system i don't know how many of you work with big data analytics using hadoop okay when you use uh, then even if my data is on hadoop file system i can extract so accordingly what is my data set i'm going what is the type in which my data set i'm going to take accordingly it will be changed any more questions okay so till now we have seen about um, how to understand your data for the packages are numpy skypy pandas matplotlib and cpy these are the five packages okay so when i want to explore i will be importing i'll show you one more example okay so here if you see i'm importing pandas as pd I'm directly taking this data set. I'm directly taking it from a website. Okay, okay. Where they are, the objective is to sell products. Okay, this is about a car accessories product. Okay, when they say uh, car accessories product, when they say, uh, when it is sales, whether it is a win or loss. So I'm taking all my values into my URL. Okay, this is any variable that I give, and I'm because it is of CSV. I'm giving sales data is equal to pd dot real underscore csv of this variable so once that is done if i give my shape so i'm able to extract within few seconds 78025 so if i give so all my variables all my data are into my sales data variable okay do you under do you know what is the type of um, data in my you need slide 16 i'll show to you sir so do you know what is the type of data uh, what is the type of data when my data is extracted into uh, my data frame and pandas uses when i take my csv and import my data into pandas what is the type of data the data type is called as data frame okay so whatever could be my data type of my data set it could be a csv it could be excel it could be a data file or it could be normal text file also okay once i import my data okay from any data type into my pandas the data type that is into my pandas is called this data frame you need slide 16 okay sir okay so and here if i use vf dot uh, head off say view sales dot head off so the first way so it has totally got 19 columns okay i've totally got 19 columns i'm splitting up my i'm just using my head where i'll be taking only my first five rows the first five rows Okay, if I give my n is equal to 12, then I get whatever is my type. If I give 10, then my final rows will be given. Okay, the final five rows. So it is totally 78,025 rows and 19 columns. Okay. Then if I want to find this, everything I'm using only pandas. Okay. If I want to find my data type, something, sometimes it is, if I, for example, if I take sub size subgroup exterior accessories can you see here supply subgroup exterior accessories it's an object that is string do you remember even one more thing i told if it is of numeric data type only you'll be able to work up machine learning so we have to convert all my non-numeric data categorical data into numeric data so i'm just figuring out all my 19 columns what is my data type and then if i use describe i already told you it works only for the integer values all right and then and uh, these are the tools, okay? These are the packages, Cborn and Matplotlib are the packages, okay, are the packages uh, which allows which allows you to visualize, which allows you to visualize. So uh, from all my data are into same data. And there is one column here. There is one column here. If you see, it is root to market, okay? There is a column called root to market. So this data set is about a sales data, whether it is win or loss. So when I'm going to go for a sale, okay, when I'm going to go for a sale, like you can get, if I'm going to buy clinical shampoo, 
okay i can get it in different shops i can get it in online there are different modes i can buy the same product okay uh, as if i am uh, i am the production and the i am product unit of clinic plus for me my objective is to find out okay through which mode of sale my sale hits the most able to understand see i am if i say for example i am the owner of clinic plus shampoos right for example and i manufacture it and i dispatch to different means to reach the customers but by the end of the day okay but by the end of the day my objective is to find through which route if my product reaches to the customer and in which route my sales are reached the highest all right so this is this column is about this my data set here i've taken for the analysis is about uh, a sales data set all right of car accessories so they the owner of the car it could be a bmw or audi or whatever it is hyundai or maruti or whatever they want to find through which route they are able to target the customers okay so it is 78000 i cannot go all through the 78000 right but see using my seaborn and matplotlib i am able to show you that okay the field says uh, that i am giving my entire data set it's a one or loss okay that's my target okay my objective that does say it is one or loss and that is called opportunity result there is a one more column here uh, called opportunity result can you see here is the trade it is there for all either it is win or loss or win or loss or win or loss okay so when i use one plot 78000 so One method that is go is field sales, resale of others, daily sales that you see in the TV and daily coverages. I can in one shot I can see the highest loss is through the field sales and the highest sales win is through the resale of. Okay, and also there are different kinds of this is the kind type of violin plot and other things. All right. So this is how we'll be exploring it. And uh, moving on to our supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Have you learned about supervised learning and unsupervised learning? Any insights? Have you can share in the chat session? Supervised and unsupervised learning. Yes. No. No. Yes. Okay. I'll continue. So supervised learning is that you know about the data. Okay, I'm input. I'm giving an input of set of apples. Okay, I go to a supervisor. There is a set of training data, and I know what is my desired output, and I have my algorithm. Okay, once I give to my algorithm, then I process it. Here is where your machine learning model runs. Okay, now my model is trained. So this phase is machine learning algorithm that works. Once you have completed your machine learning, then it turns to be a model. here i have trained so i told right in the starting my machine learning algorithm will try to learn patterns from my data set so it will learn so that it will be of the shape it will have a leaf and what is that every data has been learned but when i'm one once i've given my machine learning algorithm i've given my data set i've completed my training then once my model is ready i feed test it with in my testing phase i'm giving a green app during my training phase it was only apples red apple but because my machine learning algorithm has learned the patterns of the data when i give even a green apple or a purple apple whatever it is it will be able to tell me it is an apple able to understand it's a supervised learning so data set which has got head of it so i showed you about diabetics i showed you about wine data set i showed you about uh, uh, the sales data set you have got columns so which is supervised learning the same example when you teach in your college you are the faculty and you are the set of students so you know these are the set of students but when they are into the first time you not know about the students after you are there with them like one month or two months then you be able to know, okay these are the students who learn these needed students to support these are the beloved students as yes or no so that is an this example of supervised learning okay unsupervised learning you don't know anything about it. okay i am i am giving different types of input okay my data set is not defined like this or that i'm just giving any input okay it has got uh, apples mangoes uh, bananas okay i'm just giving to my training data 
here to try to learn patterns from my data set. Okay, to try to learn patterns from a data set. And once my model is trained, which means my data has got three sets of people, and then when it is when the output is given, then it will tell me my machine learning. There are a set of apples, there are a set of bananas, there are a set of mangoes. The before is a supervised learning. The next example, as we have seen, is an unsupervised learning. All right. So algorithm in machine learning is a procedure that runs on data. Once I write my algorithm, then it runs on my data. Then the output of that is called machine learning model. Okay, is it clear? Machine learning algorithm performs pattern recognition. It learns from the data and that fits on a data set. So once there are plentiful, plentiful machine learning algorithms available. First, I have to take my data set. I have to run on my machine learning. So this I say in every lecture, you cannot take just one data set, feed into one algorithm, and you get a result. And then you cannot say, OK, my, my, my research work is over. No, you need to take at least two to three data sets. OK, two to three uh, data sets. All right. And then you have to put into two to three algorithms, the same variants of the same type of different variants. And then with your performance evaluation metrics, we'll be able to tell them which is the best. OK, which is the best. We have got, uh, yeah. Is it clear? Any doubts on machine learning model and algorithms? So we have what set of people in um, a YouTube. If you like the lecture, you can like, you can subscribe. People on the Google Meet, at the end of the session, I'll give my YouTube link. You can like and you can subscribe to my channel to listen to more future uh, lectures whenever I come online, if, it, if you think that it's useful for you. OK, so you are able to understand I have my machine learning algorithm. Then I run my data set. And from the output of that is my machine learning model. So machine learning algorithms are different and my machine learning model. Max, uh, like Vijaya Peter Raj ma'am has asked, maximum how many features can be used if you use medical data? Yeah, if you, you know about your data set, okay, if you're going for medical diagnosis, if you know about a data set, you drop certain columns, you can do use certain columns which will aid your results. But this is not a feasible solution. There is a package in SkyKit Learn called as pre processing. In that, there is a subset of feature extraction. So once you've given your data in your feature extraction, there are plenty of algorithms for feature extraction. So your objective is to do this. Once you give into a feature extraction algorithm, your algorithm will run and give you the result of these are the features needed to compute your to find solution to your problem. You can automize it using an algorithm. If your number of columns are less, then you can manually drop certain columns and take columns that you need. But when you ask me, I advise you to go for a feature extraction algorithm. OK, there are now moving on to a machine learning algorithm. There are many machine learning algorithms. For example, you want to classify things. So the example that I took on the diabetics data set. OK, if you want to classify. All right. The patient is a diabetic patient or not. After you train your students for a semester or for a year, then you say, whether the student will pass or fail. OK, for that kind of thing, we can go for classification. You have got binary classification and also multi-classification algorithm. The examples I gave you is only for binary. You can go for k-nearest. So um, if people, now for an example, what is the disease that is prevalent now? I know everybody will add it as become an international service. What disease is prevalent now? Everybody knows from a child to the oldest in the world will know what disease is prevalent now. You're able to hear me? You're here with me? Put on the chat session, please. Put on the chat session. What disease is prevalent now? COVID-19, ma'am. COVID-19. Thank you. You ask for COVID-19, anybody will say, OK? So COVID-19 is prevalent now. So now if you say, 
if you go to the people you have to have to fear uh, some distance okay mask these are some precautions so if you go near you will get that okay say for example like people okay lots of the same frogs will fly together the same frogs so canaries will try to find if this student got 90 marks and if this student has got 95 marks both will be clustered into one group okay if this student has got 60 mark 40 mark and the next student has got 39 mark they will be clustered into group so for that you can use k nearest algorithm about accordingly how much number of k you give if it is like continuous variable very valued variables then you go for regression and for clustering okay clustering and also you can use for if you take a students of your thing you'll have above average average and below average students that also could be clustered so you should be very careful what kind of application you are working off them okay so there are many machine learning algorithm linear regression logic regression decision tree like if s no, like the same thing can be done for your uh, amazon and flipkart if the person sees of this then he takes this path or this path if it takes this path then this path so from decision tree you move to a random forest also artificial neural networks the k nearest neighbors and k means a model in machine learning is the output of the machine learning algorithm runs on the data okay so when you take uh, any machine learning models okay a model represents what was learned by machine learning algorithm it's a thing that is run after running a machine learning algorithm on training data sets in training you represent the rules the numbers and the algorithms specific to the data structure okay if you take my entire data set say i i have taken uh, this data set right um, and i told you before giving into my machine learning before giving into my machine learning algorithm i need to pre process okay i need to pre process it if it is of strings it cannot be done. so i will label order i have taken only the columns which are of strings okay and then i am converting it into uh, i am converting those into using label encoder here you can see Uh, like supply subgroups has got like serial accessories, car accessories. Same supply subgroups here and sub internally it has got a package for pre-processing. Okay, in pre-processing, uh, you will be able to, um, how to say, it will automatically remove your strings. If it is like traffic signals like red, yellow, and green, you can map it to zero, one, and two. All right, and I here you can see I don't have missing values. All right, and I don't have any strings, so it is fit to start up my machine learning algorithm. So these are the pre-processing done. So when I take my machine learning algorithm, I have to uh, split my data set into training set and testing set. This entire training phase is where, okay, I'll be using my data and target. Okay, even in my testing, I'll have my data and target. Now before I split into my training and uh, testing data. i have to figure out correctly what would be my data what is target okay if i do a sales okay if i do a sales what would be my target if i do a sales what would be my target it would be yes no it would be a winning or losing okay that i'm winning my, my sale or i'm losing my sale if i want to figure out a diabetic patient what would be my target whether the patient is diabetic or is a non diabetic if i am doing an analysis of credit card fraudulent system so what would be my target whether the particular transaction is fraudulent or fraudulent able to understand able to understand so i have to find out what would be my target okay in this data set i am going to take my entire thing i don't i may not have my opportunity number i am going to drop this opportunity number but i know my opportunity result my sales is win or loss that will be my target and i'll take other remaining columns to be my data opportunity result will be my target i will take all my data okay into my data an opportunity result will be my target here see i am dropping my opportunity result and opportunity number okay so if i print my data i have all my columns other than opportunity result and number okay this is my data so my data contains all the columns I, my data contains all the columns other than opportunity result i am removing it okay my target my target variable will have my opportunity result okay 
So here you can say my opportunity results for all my 78,000 and 25. So I, my data set I've split into data and target. Okay, data contains all the value that aids my sales and target whether the sale is one or not. So I have split my entire data set into training set and testing set. Okay, here you have a package. Okay. Here in model train test split. Okay, so I'm I'm going to give. I told I have a training set, training data, testing data. My training data will be split into data train and target train. Okay, and uh, my testing data will have data test and target test. So my you know target will have only zero or one, and data train will have all the values, and data test will have all the data. My target test will have either zero or one. And here you have it, you have your test size. Okay. Generally, you can split your data set into 60, 40. You can split your data set into 70, 30. Okay, 70%, 30%, uh, 80%, 20%. So if I give 0 0.30, which means I'm splitting my data into 70% data and 30% data. If I give 0 0.4 here, if I give 0 point, it is 60% data of training data, 40% of testing data. If I give 0 0.2, it is 80% of training data and 20% of testing data. All right. So, but I basically give 70 and 30, which gives me better accuracy. Okay. So, I have split my 78,000 rows into 54,617 data and my target. See, my data and my tar data train and target train will have the same number of rows and the tuple number also will be the same. Because it's a package, even you are not doing it manually. And my data test. So I'm splitting my test. So my 78,000, I'm splitting into 23 data tests and target is 23. So why there is no rows, because columns here, because it is only singleton. Okay, only it is 0 or 1, 0 or 1, 0 or 1. So I've taken my 17 rows. So I have my training data, testing data. Training has got a data train, target train, data test, and target test. Okay. Now I am going to give this is my machine learning algorithm. I'm trying to take my Gaussian A base algorithm. I will be giving my data train and target train. Okay. And using my data train and target. So if my values are like this, then the sales one. If my values are like this, the sales one. If my value so to learn the patterns using this algorithm. What is the algorithm that I specify? Okay, Gaussian. And when I want to predict it, it will listen carefully. I will not give my target test. Okay, I will give only my data test. So only if I give my data test from the patterns that is learned using my data drain and the drain, when I give my data test, I'm not giving what is my target. My algorithm, machine learning algorithm will give me predict one. Okay, it will say if your values are like this, it is sale is one or loss. But I have my original target test. So once I compute this algorithm, I have my original target test, I have my predictor test. If it is because the rows are the same, if it is say one target, the prediction should all be should also be the one, but it will all not be the same always. So once I compare my target test, which I have never fed in my algorithm, that is original result, and my predicted one is what I have got it from my result and of my Gaussian A base. When I compare my accuracy factor, that is a performance evaluation, I, I am getting only 75%. Correct. Okay. Now I'm the same data set I'm trying with my support vector machine here. Okay. So again, I'm trying to test. Okay. My data train and target train. I'm training using SVD method is trying to learn the patterns. And when I predict it, here it is 46%. Okay. So I'm got my predict when I compare my predicted result and target result, it is 46. This is less than my Gaussian neighbors. So I think this application Gaussian neighbors was better. I'm trying to use even one more algorithm for k-neighbor classifier. Once I give into the same thing, like data train and target train, and I'm predicting it, OK? When I take the accuracy, it is 81%. Now I can say, when I use these three algorithms, like Gaussian neighbors, the support vector machine, and k-nearest neighbor, I can find for the sales and one, the most accuracy I can get using k-neighbor classifier model. So this is what you have here. I've used only uh, one uh, data set. For your application, you have to, because I always say I take in 50,000, file 2 lakhs data and 10 lakhs data. Once you feed into your machine learning algorithm and you try it, and in your model when you test it, 
if you can find your algorithm also should be um, for tolerant and the different metrics to evaluate that's more important i give a classification report this precision recall f1 score okay how much is truly positive when i take my confusion matrix original result is also positive this is x and y okay original result the sale is one and the deducted is also one so it is 1416 which is correct okay but 3453 is done. it has been predicted wrongly that is why my performance evaluation is less here uh, my sale is lost here predictor is also lost only 3155 but 2187 is predicted wrongly so the diagonal value should be of more values okay diagonal should be a true positive true negative false positive false negative all right with that with that with that functionalities there are different formulas wherein we compute my precision recall and f1 score before itself we have tried with the accuracy values like that we can also work with the true positive rate and false positive rate the region okay roc curve the precision recall curve actually the curve should come like this the same classification report i am showing it using a uh, yellow bricks classifier for this visualization the visualization is you can use for a paper publication in my company we have got research scholars we train them okay and they write their own algorithms and they publish the paper and also we help in how to write a good journal publication okay not in publications but we help you to write papers so you can check in my uh, company's website okay you can check out in my Penny's website. You can now make a note: cirf.co.in. So I always see tell faculties if you are trained through you thousands and thousands of students will be trained. So I told you about model. Model is model data plus prediction algorithm. The algorithm is different. Machine learning algorithm is different. A model is different. That is what I gave you the topic: applying machine learning models for benchmark data sets. So model comprises of both data and procedure. Okay, you should know which algorithm that you should. Uh, Try to use it. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Feedback link. Feedback link. Feedback link. You will definitely get it. We are almost going to end. Okay. And is the model and algorithm clear? Can you suggest algorithm like sample machine code? I will tell you. Iris is one of the best data set that you can use for clustering and for also classification. You can take credit fraudulence. One of the professor has asked for classification whether the fraudulent uh, credit card of uh, fraudulence data set you can use it now. So first step you have to define a problem in machine learning. You have to prepare your data. That is what we use. You should always take benchmark data set to evaluate your algorithm. Third is evaluation. You have to improve result and pre present your results. Okay. Installation. I we told you about Python. The what are the different packages that you need? How to load? I showed you loading of three different data sets. How to visualize the data? Summarize the data? And we have to take some set of algorithms to evaluate it, and then make a prediction. If I make a prediction, then you have got list of performance metrics. Okay. So fetching a data set is more important. I'll show you data curation. You should not have any missing values before you start with your data machine learning algorithm. And third is how do you convert your categorical data into numerical data? And the wherein you have to do your pre-processing. Like one professor in YouTube, he has asked, how do I take my features? That is even there are plentiful algorithms, and also you can use a method of normalization. If you have got missing values, you can use normalization. Okay, uh, pre-processing and feature extraction packages are available. Exploratory data analysis. I showed you about the Wine data set, how we have done, and machine learning. How do you split a data set into training set and testing set? So in classification, we identify which category. If your application is like spam detection or image recognition, if you want to recognize an image, whether you are, if you take an MRI image, if there is a tumor or not, if you take an image, what are the objects that is there? Okay, if you want to classify accordingly, then I can go for classification algorithm like support vector, machine nearest neighbor, random forest algorithm. Okay, uh, so these are the different uh, sky kit. If your data are more than fifty samples, and we have to predict a category. If you have a labeled data, 
okay if you have got a labeled data you know that is what you have got columns okay then i can go for k neighbor svc this is what i showed you example today i showed you about linear svc i showed you about gaussian neighbors and i show because my data set is labeled if my data set is not labeled then i can go for clustering algorithm using k means okay how many categories it belongs to okay for predicting a category if you don't want to predict a category how the gold price is increasing how the stock price for variable uh, things that is continuously variable then i can go and for my regressions sgd okay if it is less than 100 samples then i can go for is two features that should be important then i can go for lasso or rich okay if it is uh, not less than then i can go for sd regression okay and uh, this is for the dimensional detection. What are the features that is needed alone? I'll be able to take it. So regression, I told if it is a drug response or continuous variable, then I go for regression. For clustering, for k-means, I can quickly show you uh, about k-means algorithm. Okay. So I'm taking an XClara data set. Okay. So how, what are the types of... Uh, uh data okay there are three categories at the end of uh, i've given k is equal to three okay when i give my value k as three how many number of clusters accordingly you have your centroids uh from your centroids it's trying to split okay initially my centroids are here after i run my k means algorithm i would be exactly splitting into three clusters because i don't have any labels so for that i can use the k means string algorithm Hmm. dimensional detection i told you how to extract your features after you compute machine algorithm if you want to increase your efficiency of algorithm we go to a performance called hyperparameter tuning or improved accuracies they're used for a grid search or cross validation k4 validations could be done and these are different machine learning classification algorithm i told you what benchmark data sets okay and uh, these are the benchmark of new a list of data sets for bench machine learning research if you try it in wikipedia so try if you're going to use for supervised learning as even vijay mama asked how can you take your data sets you can go for classification if you're going for clustering if you're going for anomaly detection so what is the type of problem you should clearly define the problem and <laughs> here they've given set of data sets okay these are recognized for facial recognition uh, if you want to do a, now, now the lot of research is going on facial if you wear a mask with and without mask the system should be able to correctly figure it out okay and uh, handwriting character recognition software okay for that for aerial images okay for reviews i told right we have done it for amazon review i showed an example of sales today I get tutored, you can do for web crawlers, okay? So these are this is about uh, the public data sets and benchmark data sets available. All right. So Google has got its data search uh, data set uh, search, user repository and the principle. So try to use a uh, good data sets, okay? Good data sets when you try to work with your algorithm. So this is about uh, my contact information. Okay, so today we started with machine learning, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and in machine learning, what are the deep processes? We started with NumPy, SkyPy, Matplotlib, Seaborn, SkyCat image, and we saw about the different steps how to do your machine learning. We saw the data set about Pima, that's the diabetics data set, and using Wine, we saw how we were able to do a data analysis, and using the sales data, when and loss, I showed you how to visualize the data, then how to create the data, how we split your data and then how you fit into a machine learning you tried with the three machine learning algorithm and then how we evaluate the performance matrix for the algorithms that we done using confusion matrix and precision recall and fn score all right and um yeah any more questions you can put on uh you can put it on in the uh, chat box i'll be able to answer to you and the entire session is on youtube okay uh, i'm just putting the youtube link in the chat box 
okay at the end of the session uh, you can view the entire session is there uh, you can listen to the lectures all right you can listen to my lectures and um, if you find the session was useful after the session when you open your youtube link you can give your feedback in the comments box you can give your feedback about the session in the comments box in my youtube channel okay into youtube kindly like and subscribe if you like the lecture any more questions please so my website is cir.co.in you can get my details i just share my details in the chat sessions for any other further information and my mobile number is 9003021355 mail id is dorincir@gmail.com all right don't forget to view the tag and to youtube like and subscribe my channel any more questions ma'am can we use machine learning algorithm web scraping yes you can definitely do you can scrap there is a scope scrap the package you can use and you can scrap your data and then if you're going to work with text processing you'd be able to do it lots of text processing and natural language processing algorithms could be done using both machine learning and deep learning thank you thank you vijay sir for subscribing my channel software easy to use everyone the way in which you learn so if you go to my uh, company's website we offer a course on data sciences so the level in which you have to learn there are four levels once the basic is strong then you'll be able to uh, do it further okay do it further and also the following week we have a course for digital teachers okay this is the fourth batch how to handle because you are all teachers we need to do it and during this pandemic by the grace of god i was able to train more than 1000 plus faculties around the world okay even using mobile how could they teach with and laptop also this is about the data science course syllabus okay so the methodology if you are start up uh, learn about data science we have a course okay it's a 20 hours course okay it's a 20 hours course just the basics of machine learning algorithms okay how to work on with that if you are interested you can contact me we do do a online course which is fully hands on and these are my lectures okay all my lectures are there in my website okay it has got my, like like machine learning and deep learning Uh, digital teaching classrooms how to organize webinars and python okay you can just if you click on the link you can directly go on to the youtube channel and you'll be able to see to my this any more questions participants if you have any questions kindly post it in the chat box please so on behalf of uh, crf i would like to thank uh, sarm uh, institute uh, ramabaram campus for having invited me for this talk a special thanks to shiny ma'am for this opportunity i hope this session would have been useful to me in future if you have got any questions feel free to contact me i'll be able to help you to the most what is possible thank you all thank you dr doreen for the interesting session on machine learning models and exploratory data analysis python libraries for data science data visualization machine learning algorithms and much more thank you ma'am once again welcome many thanks to all the participants for your enthusiastic participation please fill the feedback form through the link posted in the chat box within 30 minutes join us for the hands on session at 2 pm today if your pc ready with the required software installed and don't worry even if you do not have a pc you can always listen and gain knowledge thank you all